The mobile web is awesome, but sometimes you need a presence in the app stores. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, we're going to be taking a look at two technologies that let us use our web technology skill set to ship native mobile applications that exist in the app store. The way they achieve this is by using a web view that runs on the native platform and then uses the JavaScript interpreter and HTML to render your application. The two technologies we're going to take a look at are Cordova and Capacitor. Cordova has been around for many years, but Capacitor is a relatively newcomer. Now, both of these technologies use very similar strategies to get your mobile web code onto an application on a mobile device. But they have subtle differences in terms of the install experience and their philosophy around how you build and run applications. Let's take a look. For us to effectively compare Cordova and Capacitor, I want to go ahead and jump into a blank CLI project and actually go ahead and install Cordova and Capacitor into this project and just give it a basic default setup. So uh, if we take a look, we've got a ng nude application called Cordova v Capacitor, and we've got a project. All of this should look completely familiar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Cordova CLI that I've installed globally. So I just globally added Cordova to the project. And now we're going to use Cordova create Cordova. So this is going to create a new project called Cordova in this same folder. And then we'll just CD into that folder. I'm going to blow away the www folder here. And I'm going to create a symbolic link uh, up a directory into dist slash Cordova v Cordova. Uh, excuse me, Cordova v capacitor. Uh, and then what this will do is this will allow us to uh, actually do a Cordova build. And we should see that the uh, application works just fine. So in order for us to be able to do this, we're going to need to do a production build. So we're just going to do ng build dash dash prod. And we're going to need to remember to change the base href to dot slash. And we'll actually be able to use this same production build for both our Cordova and our capacitor application because they, they work somewhat similarly. So as soon as this build is done, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to um, go ahead and jump into the Cordova v Capacitor folder and we will add the Android platform because that's what we're going to be building for today. All right, so we've got a actual working Angular application. It's been rendered out to our dist folder here. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go ahead and run Cordova at platform add Android. And this should add our uh, Android platform into Cordova, set it up so that we can render out to an Android device. And now what we'll do side by side with this is we will actually go ahead and do the exact same thing for our capacitor project. So uh, cap is the short name for the capacitor CLI, which I already installed globally. And we can say uh, dash dash help and see all the capacitor options. But we're going to do the exact same thing and say cap create um, capacitor. And now we've got a nice little helpful menu here. So it just asks us what app name, what package name we want to uh, use. And then just like the Cordova applications can install all of our dependencies. Uh, if we compare and contrast these two CLIs, um, what you can kind of see is that the capacitor CLI is a little bit easier to use. Uh, things are a little bit easier in terms of walking you through things. It's got a wizard. It's got much simpler options. It doesn't have a lot of extra output uh, if you compare that with the Cordova installation. But what I've found is that the Cordova installation can actually be a little bit easier um, because Capacitor wants you to use NPX all the time. He doesn't want you to install globally, and then so the commands end up being much more complex. Uh, so it's it's kind of uh, your choice which of these you find a little bit easier. One of the other things to note is that if we CD into our capacitor project, uh, it's already generated a um, git ignore file for us. So if we just take a look at the git ignore file, um, it's already ignoring a lot of the standard files, whereas you'll have to go and make that yourself for your Cordova project so you don't accidentally check in a bunch of extra source code for the platform and all of those other things. Um, we can also take a look at the strategies for these two, uh, to, uh, these tool. We can also take a look at the strategies for these two, two tool chains. We can also take a look at the strategies for these two tool chains. So if we use cap add Android, we can actually see what's happening here is that Capacitor is setting up a full Android project for us. And so if we take a look at our Android folder, um, this is actually a full Android application. And so if I wanted to do something like 
open up Android Studio, that's actually a option. And that's actually the only way to do a build with Capacitor. And this really comes down to the heart of the two strategies. Capacitor is trying to be a little bit of glue between a web application or a mobile web application and the native platforms, whereas Cordova is really trying to wrap away and hide some of the complexities of mobile platforms. So if we look in the bin studio.sh folder and we just open this project, we'll see here is our project. And then it actually has all of the Android manifest things. Uh, it has all of the settings files. All of these files I might want to modify as a developer that's gonna be shipping onto a mobile platform like Android or iOS. But this actually requires me to install Android Studio. This requires me to understand a little bit more about how Android works. And so if I wanted to actually run this application and do a build that I could see working in a emulator, so we'll just connect this to the emulator here. We actually have an emulator ready to go. Uh, what will happen is it will do all of the build within Android Studio using the Gradle tooling. And then uh, as soon as it's complete, it will install it on the device. You get this nice little splash screen and then the project renders. Uh, so the one thing we did forget to do here was we forgot to remove the www folder. Um, and in, unfortunately, you can't just relatively symlink uh, in capacitor. You actually have to do a full um, path symlink because otherwise the uh, what ends up happening is that www folder gets copied into the Android project uh, and then the symlink is no longer correct. So we're just going to create a symlink uh, into my workspace, demos with Angular, uh, Cordova v capacitor, dist Cordova v capacitor, and that's all going to be pointed at www. So normally with a Cordova project, I could just rerun all the Cordova commands and everything would work. But how it works in capacitor, because you actually have a real Android application, is I have to run capacitor sync Android, I believe is the command. Uh, and so that actually copies all the files back in so they all get updated here. So this time when we actually run on our connected device, we should see our Android application running. So again, we've had the capacitor uh, logo here, and then we've got the Android application now running in a web view using very, very similar strategies, but with a bit of a different strategy for how that application is constructed. If we jump back to the Cordova side of the world and we run Cordova run Android, you see that this command doesn't require us to know really anything about Android. Uh, I didn't have to install Android Studio, I just had to get the SDK set up on my machine, um, which actually does require Android Studio, but I don't have to learn that tooling at all. And it's gonna go directly via the command line, via a, a very familiar looking build command into the emulator, and we should see our application works just fine here. So uh, we're gonna get an identical application out basically, because both Capacitor and Cordova support the same plugin systems. Uh, Here's app. This is what you get from the capacitor version of the application. Uh, and then you have Hello Cordova, which is the default that you get for the Cord Cordova application. And again, you can kind of see all of this manifest in the file systems. So if you take a look at the Cordova folder, you're going to see this config.xml. This is where all of the information for all of your applications goes, uh, whether that's uh, the name of the application, the namespace, uh, author information, what intents you want all those sorts of things. It lives in this very Cordova specific file, whereas Capacitor, you're just gonna get an Android folder out, uh, and this Android folder has all of the normal things uh, that an Android developer might know about, such as an application manifest. So if we search for application manifest, it should find it. I never remember where these are. Build Gradle. Android manifest, here it is. Capacitor Android app source main. Um, so I would have to know where this is in the Android ecosystem. I'd have to know what all these things mean. Whereas in the Cordova world, things are trying to be simplified. Uh, if you compare the kind of developer experience, I would say that Cordova, despite its kind of worse API and all of these really meaningless messages, uh, it's definitely easier to get started in Cordova. But what is going to end up happening is as my application gets more and more complex, the distance of my Cordova app from the native platform is going to cause me 
more problems. And so uh, because Cordova is trying to abstract the platforms away, I have to learn more Cordova glue, whereas Capacitor is trying to be uh, as minimal as possible in the glue. And so Capacitor should be a little bit easier as I scale and as I get into more complex interactions between the platform and the mobile device. But both, I would say today, both Cordova and Capacitor are fantastic ways of getting started. You can see uh, we got up and running very, very quickly with our application. Uh, and that's that's really all you need, right? If, if we're building an application, we're using kind of some of the PWA best practices. This will get us a native installed application store experience in both iOS and Android using either of these technologies, either of these techniques. Hopefully this video was useful to you, and I will see you in the next one.